Well, let's get to some T-SQL fundamentals. I want to teach you one of the misconceptions here that can really kind of goof you up a little bit. I'm going to just connect to my default instance. We don't need the object explorer over here. We don't really need much except for a query window here. I'll probably spend most of my time with this particular screen, just a white screen, you and I writing some code together. So let's talk about things like batches, scripts, go, so let's just say batches, scripts, go, and statements. Okay, I want to teach you a little bit about the fundamentals of each one. Okay, so we talked about the idea of this script, right? So a SQL script is a .sql file or other. It doesn't have to be a .sql. Uh, but it's just a file that contains SQL commands to execute against a server. Okay, that's it. Right. I could save this as a SQL script. So save this as a SQL server query file, SQL server script, my SQL script, and that's all that is. Okay and then I can load it up and I can execute it. There are different tools that allow you to execute the commands within a file. So we could use a tool like PowerShell. Uh, we could use SQL CMD. We'll talk about those tools later on as ways to execute scripts. Uh, but they would be able to just load up that SQL file and execute all of the scripts. Now what's inside the script is a series of statements. Okay? So a statement would be something like this. This would be a statement, select all from sys.databases. And you see the IntelliSense kicking in here on mine. Now you may not have the IntelliSense in your edition, depending on which version or edition you're working with, but it's simply popping up to auto-complete what I'm typing. Okay? Now a statement like this, or we would have a statement that could begin with insert. Right? A statement is a command to execute. Now we have a statement terminator, which is the semicolon character here. Okay? This is actually an optional command. So the semicolon is optional except in one instance, and that's working with what is called a CTE. A, uh, we cover those really more in the query writing class course. 160, a common table expression. We do have to have those there. But you can use it as the statement terminator. Okay, this is what it's used for in other languages. It tells SQL, hey, I'm done. That's the end of this select statement. I'd like to begin another one. So sys dot, I don't know, sys dot all views. Okay. Okay. You'll probably not see most people using the semicolon in the transact SQL world unless they've come from another language. What I've found is people coming from Oracle and DB2 just naturally put the semicolon in their statements. People who learned transact SQL as their first language, they don't. Okay? Because it works fine. Like, for example, I highlight these, I run them. I get two different result sets, one for each statement. Okay? Here's the top one, here's the bottom one, and I can flip between them in the result set pane down at the bottom. Okay? But even if I take off the semicolon, it's the exact same thing. Okay? There is no difference. SQL is smart enough to know, hey, the, this is the beginning of a new statement. So using the semicolon just tells SQL Server, that's the end of this statement. Okay. If I came over here and I put the semicolon after the from and I run that, notice I get a syntax error. Because I've told it, hey, that's the end of the statement, and it's not expecting it there. It's looking for me to tell it which table or which view to select from. Okay. So it's just the statement terminator. Now speaking of statements here, did you notice that when I highlighted this one line of code and I executed it, it only runs the highlighted statement. It didn't run the select all from sys.allviews. I could run that if I highlight it. Okay. And before 
I highlighted both and I ran them. The management studio is fairly smart that way. If you have nothing selected at all and you say execute, it executes every statement in the file in sequential order. Meaning that it won't execute this one until this one is finished. Okay, so it'll wait for that one to complete and then it will do a serial execution. Now, if I want to though, I can highlight specific sections. Okay, so I highlight these and we're good. Okay, it just runs those two. Now this is a comment, right? The two dashes right there is a comment. So when I run that, there's no executable statement for it to perform. So there's nothing for me to do. Now, coming down here, let's talk about the idea of the word go. Surely you've seen this. If you've worked with any sort of scripts before, you've seen this word go. Go is the batch terminator in SQL. So go is a special command that is a batch terminator. So then that means we've got to understand what a batch is. So then a batch is a set of SQL commands that get sent to SQL Server in one network packet. Okay. Now, when we get into a couple of videos from now, after we do our exercise here in a few moments, we're going to talk about variables, and it's going to become a little more important to understand what a batch is. But right here, we have two batch terminators. That's not a SQL command. That is not a SQL standard. This is something that the Transact SQL language, it's not even really part of the Transact SQL language. It's something that the management studio uses as a placeholder. This says, hey, take everything before me, wrap it up in a network packet, and send it to SQL Server. Now, I understand that batches are a little bit hard to understand right now. Let me do this. Let me show you something else. I'm going to use a different database. And don't worry so much about the queries that I'm writing here. Uh, just give me a second to, you know, don't worry so much about all the junk I'm writing. Just give me a little bit to, to write it in here. All right, so if I were to just run this, if I just hit execute right here, what SQL Server Management Studio is going to do is it looks at my code, it parses all of this together, and it says, okay, I don't see a go, I don't see a batch terminator, so I'm going to submit this, all of these commands, in a single network packet. So I say execute, and it runs the queries. And down here in the result pane, it stacks them on top of each other. Here's dim account. And you can see I could scroll down to get to the next result. Here's the currency. And then I scroll down, I get to the final result, which is selecting from the dim date where the calendar quarter is five. Okay. All right. Kind of getting a little bit, hopefully, of understanding what that means. We, ha we didn't specify a batch terminator, so it sent all of this in a single network packet. Now, the Management Studio allows us to highlight this section of code, right? So I'm just now, my network packet only contains the highlighted set of code, okay? So it didn't, you notice, it did not run the dim account. There is no way to see other result sets over here. It only ran the highlighted portion. Right. For the time being, I'm, I'm about to leave this topic, but I want you to notice here that if you put the go in the wrong place, now you're going to get a syntax error. You see the red squiggly lines down here. What's actually occurred, Management Studio sees the batch terminator and it says, okay, let me take these three things and I'm going to run that command. And it does. So it takes that command and it submits it to SQL Server. SQL Server processes it and it runs it back. When it is finished 
processing that set of commands, it then goes and says, okay, where was I again? Oh yeah, I left off right here. Let me run this command now. Let me go here. And it ran just that command and it came, came back with the incorrect syntax. But when we run them all together like this, you'll notice I don't have anything highlighted, so it's running everything. It runs it from top to bottom. So it runs the first batch, then when that's finished, it runs the next batch. And so it actually did process, if you go to the results pane over here, you see I'm flipping between them here, then it did run this batch and it returned the results. The next one you got a parsing error. Now we could have actually determined that this was a problem by using the little blue parse command up here. Okay, I'll show you how to do this. This is a pretty handy uh, little tool here. Uh, you can see somewhat of a junky little um, message down here. We get the incorrect syntax, but it says line one. Well, that's not line one, is it? That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, line seven, isn't it? And, and in fact, you can actually see it saying line seven right down here in the management studio. Uh, so like if I place my cursor down here, uh, you see it says line seven. Okay, That's the abbreviation down there. Uh, is what that means. Notice if I move it up, you see it changing. Okay, But it says line one down here. Line one in reference to the batch. This is the first line in this batch. Okay. What's nice about it is I can double click on it and it highlights that. Like notice that right here I can double click on it and it sometimes, most of the time it will be able to do this. It can then highlight the offending line of code. So you parse it, you double click on it and you can find it. The line one part refers to the position within the batch. And, and you can see this, watch this, if I take out the go but I make it say were <laughs> so it's not just where it is incorrect and when we then parse this down here you can see it correctly identifies that as the sixth line of the batch but if I put the batch terminator right there aha line two we started a new batch right here so it's the second line in that batch all right so that's batches right there you understand now batches and scripts and go statements. These are all SQL statements that we're running. We're executing all of these SQL statements. As we develop through the course, we're going to be learning a little bit more and expanding our knowledge, but I think this is enough to kind of get us started for right now.